What up, no loves? Welcome to my channel. My name is Lex. If you're new here, then hey. If you're existing, then welcome back to my channel. Either way, subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscribe button. Here you will find lifestyle vlogs um, and just lifestyle stuff mostly and some beauty content as well, skincare content. So if you're into that type of thing or you like my personality, please hit the subscribe button. Y'all, this is my first video of my first Lex talk in my apartment. I filmed my last Lex talk in my old apartment. That was like two years ago, almost. So yeah, huh. I have never filmed like a sit down video in here. I don't think, maybe, I might be lying, but I feel like I can't remember and I feel like I, I never have. But today's video is a Lex talk video, which is basically like a Q and A. Y'all ask me questions. I deliver and I answer and thank you to everybody that did send me a question I really do appreciate it so let's get into it I don't think so but you know when you get the blow on the camera get the blow on the shot up child you be looking crazy like hair be sticking up booger be in your nose let me make sure I got no booger thrown up okay I don't have no booger thrown up okay so first question is from Joy No Pain. She said, why do you keep leaving us like that? Be dropping us like a bad habit. Laugh out loud. And I'm talking about you too. Y'all have to be understanding. Okay. I was in the space where I didn't want to create content on YouTube. Where I didn't want to create videos. And then my mom got sick. Then she passed away. And now my mind has just been on focused on me being stable with my finances and different things. And when I'm not stable with my finances, it's hard for me to function. Um... I have to have consistent money yeah it's hard for me to function I do not like the feeling I do not like the feeling of being broke I'm like my mama my mama used to always say I only get depressed when I don't have no dollars and that's how I am so creating content I did used to make, I make a okay amount but I've never made enough where I felt like I could just do create content so I have to have other streams of income as well and I'm pretty sure I can get to the point with that with my content creation but I'm working on it and I'm getting it together. But I'm sorry if y'all feel like I left y'all. But sometimes my mental just don't be in a good space. And I have to get myself together. I can't necessarily. Sometimes I can't really get on camera when I don't feel to my best. And I try some days and I still do some days. But I'm finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. tunnel and I feel so much better. Because I was so stressed out and depressed. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But I feel so much better now. So I'm sorry for leaving y'all. But I'm back. And I'm going to I'm going to be consistent. I've been being disciplined in my everyday life and it's trickling over to things like this. Like me being able to create a video. So I've been working out every day. I've been uh, not eating meat. So I've been doing good, y'all. But we'll talk about that in the vlog. Okay. The next video, the next question is from Motifa. Motifa asked like five questions, y'all. Because she always asks like five questions. Hey, girl. You know I love you because you've been following me for forever. Since forever. Would you ever think about moving back to Detroit? about moving back to Detroit so much and because I just I miss it and I want it's a job that I really want to do and I've been debating if I want to go back home to work or where I would want to go uh but I don't know I can't say that I wouldn't I can't say that I would but yeah I probably would so I've been looking at different places and just calculating things because if I get this when I get this job that I want I can move to wherever I want to move so yeah and I think I may move back home but we'll see when was the last time you visited Detroit the last time I went home was in September for and I was at home because my mom was sick so it really wasn't good you know my mom was sick she passed away we had her funeral and then I came back down to Georgia I hadn't been home in like two years since then though like I had not been home in a while do you plan on staying in Atlanta if, and if not, where would you move to? Most probably Texas, but I don't know what part of Texas. Let me know down below some spots y'all think I'll be, I would like living in, cause I don't know. I feel like with Georgia, it feels so redundant to me now. I feel like I've been doing the same thing over and over and over again. And I'm really kind of over it, but I don't know where I would move to. And I don't know if I'm over, I was over it because I just was feeling sad. But I feel like I'm in the same cycle. Like I get up, I do this, I do that. And I kind of want that shock to myself again. Because when you move to a new state, you literally have a shock factor. Like where you're like, oh my God, I moved to a new state. I cannot believe this. 
I don't know anyone. I don't know the good food places. I don't know anything. And sometimes you just need that. <laughs> like, I want to go visit some other places. Like, I'm tired of being in Georgia. I just want to see some other things, experience some other things, and have that shock. Like, what am I going to do? What is this going to bring? Because be, I've been in Georgia. It'll be in July. It'll be 10 years I've been here. And I don't know if I see myself having a family here or having kids and stuff here. I just, how have you been? I've been okay. I've been good. Like I said, I'm finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. <sighs> I feel better because I was like, I'm still grieving and I feel like grief is just tricky in itself. What does your next chapter look like? That's from Winford. Hey Winford, if you watching this. But, so my next chapter, I don't know. I really sat down and I thought about what do I want for a dream career? What do I feel like I can see myself doing? I know what I want to do as far as career wise and I just need to implement that but I'm not really talking about it until it actually happens and then I know what I enjoy doing I feel like I kind of lost what my passion is though or what I feel passionate about or what my not passion but what my purpose is I haven't really been focused on that because I was just so sad that I couldn't even focus on like oh i have a passion for this i want to do this i it just was like i need i need stability and when i sat down and i said to myself i need stability i want a career i want to have something that i that i don't mind doing that i enjoy and um yeah i think i actually found out what that is and i'm gonna try it and see if i like it but y'all have to wait to see what it is okay all right the next video, I mean, next question is, favorite thing, hold on, favorite thing in nature currently? Smack Chantel, I think it's her name, Chantel. I think, hey, Smack girl. Favorite thing in nature currently? Seeing any good movies or shows? Uh, favorite thing in nature? I just like nature. Like, I like being outside. I like taking hikes. I like taking walks. I do a one mile walk every day now, and I have a job now, child, so. I do a one mile walk with my coworker on our break on our first break we always walk one mile and I've been like sticking to it but I really like going out in nature and just being one with nature just feels so good so peaceful so calm and but I don't have a favorite thing in nature right now but yeah and hold on I'm about to take this lock off my phone I hate having a lock screen on my phone but I guess it's good if you lose it but child all right, favorite thing, see any good show, movies or shows lately? My favorite movie, well this movie has become my favorite movie, is Lou off of Netflix. That junk is so good, Lou was so good. And what else? Uh, Nothing else really. I know they had a new season of You on Netflix and I need to watch that. But girl, I only watch TV, I used to watch TV when I used to go to one of my friends house. But I don't really watch TV at my house. I watch like YouTube or inspirational stuff. So yeah, I'm not a big watching shows type girl. But some shows I do watch. Don't get me wrong. When I get in the mood, cause today, when I get done recording this, I'm getting my ass up on, I'm, I'm gonna be watching TV. I'm gonna sit here and relax and edit this. So yeah. All right. How are you? Your new schedule. How How's pescatarian life treating you? I'm a pescatarian too, by the way. Okay, y'all asking me how I am. I am okay. I'm doing good. I'm doing better. Okay, but well, thank y'all for asking. I really do appreciate people who really care about me and my well-being. Because I think sometimes people want you to create content. They want you to get on the screen where you been. You ain't being consistent. I need to turn my other thing off. You're not being consistent. Why you not doing this? Why you not doing that? And it's like, my mental health is lacking. Okay? So I got to get back on what my mental health is up to par. Okay, but new schedule um i don't know if you're talking about my new content schedule i don't have a content schedule i don't know i want to start putting videos up on mondays so this will be the first video that y'all see so good morning happy monday and yeah i want I, my vlogs are normally on mondays but i really didn't do anything but when i leave when i get done recording this too i think i'm gonna go to target because i want to get me some airpods some more airpods yeah and i'm excited about that because i already got a case for them it was three dollars anyway if y'all okay how's pescatarian your life going if y'all don't know i have been pescatarian for approximately seven days okay i have not eaten meat and let me tell y'all because i did a challenge with my family 
probably like uh, last year sometime and I saw I could see like my stomach was going down if you don't know I have an apple shaped body my stomach is chunky okay and when I look down I cannot see my cuda cat okay and when when I was doing that and when I was doing that challenge the challenge was I was my stomach was going in so I've been doing the challenge I do see some bloating going away for my stomach I also feel, but the biggest thing that I've seen is I feel so lightweight. When I was eating meat, I felt so like way down. I feel so bloated, especially at the, as soon as I get done eating, I would feel so bloated. But now that I've been eating seafood, I don't feel as bloated. I feel lightweight. I don't feel as heavy. I don't feel as deep down and sad and depressed. Because they say that you take on the emotions of those animals when you eat meat. And I believe it because baby, I feel so much better. Now, not to say that seafoods don't have emotions, but I just feel better. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's going good. And but I do miss me some some chicken and steak tacos and turkey. But it's going good. I don't know if I'll stay pescatarian, but I'm gonna challenge myself for as long as I can and see how it changes my body and what it does for my body. Yeah. Okay. So how are you mentally since your mom passed? Y'all, grief is just a crazy thing. Like, I think somebody asked on YouTube, like, how are you dealing with the grief? But I miss my mama, like, every single day. And I was just looking at a picture when I was doing my makeup because I have a picture of my mama and my daddy on my vanity. And I was like, damn, they took that picture. And they didn't know. I mean, you know you're going to die. But they took that picture and then my kids, if I do have children, will see that picture. Like this is your grandma and your granddaddy, but they would never meet them. They probably will meet them before they get to me, you know, before um, I have them. And it's just crazy to me. Girl, I'll get to crying in a heartbeat. Y'all already know. But I'm doing good. I just went through a hard time with because I didn't get a chance to really, I feel like, grieve when my mom, when I was in Detroit, because when mom, we found my mom was sick, we had to start going into action and making plans on her. Me and Rhea like, got together and did, made plans on everything that we needed to do. As far as paperwork, as far as funeral home, as far as everything. And when I got back to Georgia, it was like, damn, mom, not calling me. I can't call my mama for certain things. I don't have that. And even to hear people talk about their mama, it like <laughs> makes me sad sometimes. But I am doing good. I don't think I would ever get done grieving my mama. I think I'll grieve my mama until I leave this earth myself and I see her again. But you learn to live with the grief. And like I said, I've been trying to keep my mind in a good place. Just keep my mind in a good place, and I do that by watching positive things, saying my affirmations every day, working out makes me feel good and keeps me balanced, and doing what feels good to me, and letting go of all the dead weight that I felt like um, did no longer serve me. I actually changed my phone number. Grief is a natural part of life. A person leaving is a natural part of, part of life. You just learn to live with it. And as the days go by, you just learn to live with it, you know, and create the best life for yourself because at some point you won't be here. <laughs> so, yeah. She asked me too, why I move to another state. Yeah, I will move to another state. And so, we have two more questions. One from Diamond Young that says, Have you found a potential soulmate that we don't know about? If not, no need to rush. Let it happen naturally and learn how to enjoy your own company and you will become the best wife and mother. And no soulmate. I mean, we have a lot of soulmates in our lifetime. Soulmates can be friendships. Soulmates can be relationships. But, no, I don't have a soulmate that I met that y'all don't know about. I don't have anyone that I'm dating at this time. I'm just focusing on me and what I need to be focused on. I have a six month plan as to what I need to be doing and that's what I focus on. If I meet someone during that time, and I feel like, okay, we're supposed to be together or something like that, maybe. But I don't know. But right now, I'm just focused on what I need to be doing. And I am, like you said, focused on me. And 
I need to enjoy my own company. And it's a lot of things that I want to accomplish, a lot of things that I want to see because honestly, you never get a chance to be a single woman again once you decide to get married, once you decide to be in a long-term relationship, once you decide to have children, you will have somebody all by your side at all times. And those are the harder moments, you know, like you don't get, you get your space where you make your own time. But right now I have the ability to do anything I want to do. I can move to a new state. I can up and move out the country. I could date if I want to. I can date if I don't want to. I can go on a million dates and just see what's going on. I can get married. I can do a lot of things. And I want to enjoy that because I just value having my own time and having my single moments. And yeah. I just want to enjoy myself but honestly just from being hurt from pe by people and things not working out the way I wanted them to I really am working on being a more feminine woman I'm also working on opening my heart chakra so that I am accepting to love when love does find me and I'm a certain type of woman when love does find me because I have become being hurt or the people doing you how they want to do you can sometimes make you become overly masculine and i don't have an interest in being masculine or being a man i really want to bask in my femininity and i don't think it's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. so that's what i'm doing i'm working on my heart chakra all my chakras being aligned me being aligned and i'm working on just flowing like the wind not being uptight because yesterday I was like driving and I was so mad like what the f what the f they putting over there like I get so mad sometimes about just crazy stuff but I think it's just me being irritable because I might be depressed about something or I may be sad about something or I don't know what it is but I'm making a conscious effort every month every I'm making a conscious effort every day to just flow like the wind uh, everything does not require my attention everything does not require my opinion it just is what it is you just go with the flow of things and just knowing that things always work out for me so you know how sometimes you may get hurt by people and you're like i never love again or i'm not gonna do but it's like you just have to be open and give that energy out and you'll receive what it is that you want i have no doubt that i will have what i want as far as a family or just whatever that may be romantic wise but right now I'm focused on me child okay mm -hmm. all right the next the last qu well she asked her. oh she gave me some questions like topics that I could do now if y'all want me to do where I write where I do like just talking videos let me know because y'all know I talk it down okay we can just sit here and chat it up about different topics you can let me know um, I also want to start going live on one day out of the week, but y'all have to let me know what day y'all want that to be. We can meet, we can talk on live, we can chat up, we can get some drinks, we can eat, and let's talk, okay? Alright, my cheeks are hurting from smiling and talking. I have not talked so long, like in front of the camera in so long. Okay, let me start off by asking, how are you doing physically and mentally, just overall, how are you? Oh, I'm good. Okay, we already talked about that, how I feel. Like, y'all, like three of y'all asked me how I'm doing. She also said, make more makeup videos, please. It's pleasing to watch when you do your looks on yourself and others. Okay. Topic, fear of being so scared of fear. You're not having your confidence or motivation. Not knowing what you're set here, what you're set here to do. Do you believe people should set certain things? Okay, I guess these are questions. So, she asked, do you believe should do you believe people should set certain standards when it comes to friends just as they as they do relationships? I think that in friendships you also have to have your boundaries when it comes to certain things. Um with friends sometimes you just don't click anymore. Sometimes, because I, just because I've known you for a long time does not necessarily mean that you will be in my life until we die. It's just kind of tricky in the sense of you have to evaluate the people that are around you. And when you're growing and when you want better for yourself, it's certain things that you cannot tolerate, especially when it comes to friendships. And even like we, you said in romantic, but this is more so for friendships. Sometimes in friendships, you just don't mesh anymore. It does not work anymore. 
Um, and I said this year I'm done trying to force relationships. I'm done trying to force, force friendships. If you don't want to be my friend anymore, so be it. I just don't have anything to give to it. I think when looking for friends, it's important. The trait that a person should look for is, is a, does a person really have your back? Okay, girl, you need to get up and do your work today or whatever it may be. I want people around me that motivate me to want to be better. Like, not talking about it. Not, oh, I'm going to do it. I want people around me that are like, girl, what you doing for your business this week? This is what I'm doing that I can bounce ideas off of because I've always been business oriented. I've always been where I can look at something and say, you need to do this, this, and that. But why is my memory card low? Hold on, y'all. Well, the memory card not low, but after a certain amount of time, it kind of cuts off. But I think having people around that motivate you, mold you, like y'all can shape and mold each other. It's a two-way street. You pat the bed, you putting the flower down, and I'm molding the bread like that, okay? And I think it's important to evaluate if people are really bringing value into your life. If every time we get on the phone, we're talking about other people. Because, y'all, I like the gossip sometimes. I'm not going to hold you. I talk my, my ish, okay? But I want to get away from gossiping because it just is not beneficial. It's just not, what does it do, you know? But... Uh, you know, just gossiping about celebrities, stuff like that, things that you see online, whatever. And if y'all just sitting on the phone gossiping all day, if y'all just sitting on the phone, sh your friend complaining, you complaining, she's saying certain things, and then I rubbing off on you because little do you know, when people are pessimistic, it can rub off on you. You can be so optimistic and so happy about the things that are coming on in life and how things are going, and you look on the phone with your homegirl and she like, this going on in the world. What the hell going on with this? And what the hell? And then it makes you feel like, oh my God. Now I'm sad. Now I'm down. You know, now I feel like, damn, men, men ain't nothing. Or women ain't nothing. Or, you know, like, so I think you have to have your boundaries and know what you are looking for in friends. And what you're looking for in friendships. And that's that. And if a person does not fit that, they don't fit that. So, one last thing. Your intuition is your intuition. You know what you know to be true. If you show me exactly who you are, you have to pay attention to a person and how they act. I used to give people three tries, but it don't take three tries no more for me because I can feel in my gut what I already know to be true. And I don't go, I don't go. Once I determine you're a certain way, once I determine I don't like something, once I determine it's gonna be a no, I feel how I feel about it and that's what it is. I don't go against my gut or my intuition because every time I do that, it always leaves me in a bad place. Period. I'm always like, what the hell? So, follow your intuition. If you feel like your homegirl jealous, she be saying a little jealous shit to me. You know? She probably jealous. Or she don't want you to... A lot of people will, be, will befriend you and they don't want... They want to see you do good but not better than them. I want to see you do all right, but I don't want you to do better than me. What? Like, a lot of people are like that, and you have to be able to identify those things and put people in their place, in their place in your head. You ain't got to be like, you trying to, you ain't got to say nothing. But just put people in their place where they're supposed to be. Like, okay, that's just my homegirl I go work out with, but she got a little jealousy on her. She a little jealous of me for whatever reason. She might see something in me that she can't see in herself, you see? But they don't have nothing to do with me. And I put people in their place and I let them be. Because, child, you ain't going to stress me out. Ain't nobody stressing me out in 2023 or the years to come. That's how you start looking old. I'm going to tell you that now. Period. Okay? All right. So, let's look at the next question. Fear of being scared, so scared of failure. Not having the confidence or motivation. Not knowing what you're set out here to do. I don't know what you're trying to say, but I think fear is not real. I mean, we, we can fear so many different things. You can fear life. You can fear walking out on the street. You can fear, oh, I'm not, I feel I'm going to fail. But if you never try, how would you even fail? What if I try and I don't make it? You just don't make it. What if when you try things, I mean, I've tried many things and people will tell you, people will have said to me, you don't stick to nothing. 
you don't, you, you said you gonna do one thing, you say you gonna do another. But I had to sit down and ask myself, some of those things I was doing because I felt like that's what I was supposed to do or people wanted me to do those things. So I decided to do them. And child, they wasn't what I wanted to actually do. So the fear of failure is simply an illusion. You have to act to get anything in this life. You cannot get nothing, something for nothing. When I was about to make this video today, I woke up late, I was supposed to make it this morning because I was going to go do some Instacart. And I said, okay, I don't feel like making a video. But then I said, okay, Alexis, you said you want to get back on your content. You said you want to uh, work with more brands. You said certain things, but if I don't make, create content, how would anybody ever find me? You always have to put something out in order to gain something of this it's no such thing as failure i don't feel like i'm gonna fail i'm gonna try this and if it does not work it just does not work and i will move on to the next thing and i will find what i enjoy doing and what will work for me it's that simple done are the days where we're telling ourselves we can't do it and what if it fail and what if it don't work and what and what if it do if it fails then what you know how many people that have businesses or that chose to do something in life failed 20 000 times before they actually um succeeded you won't be exempt from that. And you have to trust that you know what you're doing. And and if you don't, go learn. And you can always learn and do it. The dumbest people are making so much money. And you sit here, I'm scared. I don't want to do it. I'm scared. No, ma'am. Just do it. And remember this video. Play this part out. Just do it. What I said. Just do it. Shit. Why I want to hear all of that? Not having the confidence or motivation. Okay, the confidence I think goes to have, not having fear. If you're not confident, you're not going to want to do it. Because when I started my suite, when I got my suite, I remember a girl saying, if you just got out of school, you're not going to know certain stuff. And then I wasn't confident. And then that caused me to fail because I wasn't confident. You got to be like, I know what I know. And you have to trust the process of it all. Because you, when you trust the process, everybody started from somewhere. Whether you're doing hair, whether you're doing nails, whether you're doing facials, whether you start a business. Everybody started with zero. Zero customers, zero clients, zero people. But, and they had to learn. They had to watch things. They had to educate themselves. They had to touch, I'll use that statistician for, for an example. They had to do many facials to learn what works in the school skin and what doesn't. They had to uh, take classes. They had to brush up on their skills. They had to get a mentor. It's a process for everything. It's a timeline for everything. Everything starts at zero. Why aren't you confident? Because if you don't know anything, it's people that get on here and say any, they say anything, don't know nothing. And they successful. Because they believe in themselves. They believe that I can do this. I, can, I believe I can make this much money. I believe I can have this. It's no different. You have to be confident. And sometimes you also, and sometimes you won't be, but really when you're not, you gotta look at what you're looking at. Cause I think a lot of times we looking on social media, looking at other people, now you're not confident. Oh, I don't think my stuff is good as theirs. I don't got a good camera like them. My phone, only the iPhone 10. Oh, I don't think, you got all this thing going on in your head because you saw Sally Sue on social media that got this, this, and this going on. Now you're not confident in what you believe to be true and what you feel like you wanna do. But you gotta be confident, boo. Confidence is key in anything. And when you're not confident, we can smell it all on you. When you walk in, when you talk in, when you think you out and about and looking like, we can tell you're not confident for real. So that's something you gotta work on and stop feeding yourself bull crap all day and put you on some affirmations on YouTube, put you on some confident frequency music when you go into bed and affirm to yourself, I am confident, I am beautiful, I am amazing. It's nobody in this world like me. I am strong. I don't let anything shape me. I don't compare myself to anybody. Baby, you gotta you gotta, you got to affirm things over your life. You hear me? Because watching stuff on social media will bring you down. Oh, y'all ain't got the luxury apartment. Y'all ain't got the being. You know, folks just try to tear you down. But be happy with where you are and what you what with what you got. Okay? Cause your life can change within a year, it can change within a blink of an eye. So you gotta be confident. 
All right, uh, the next thing, not knowing what you're set here to do. I think whatever you're supposed to be doing, it comes easy to you. Whether that's talking in front of a camera, whether that's cooking, whether that's organizing for people, whether that's doing that, whatever it may be, whether that's having a business, it will come easy to you. Now, you may not know everything. You may not know everything. You may not know how to move forward, but you can always educate yourself. But some things you just have a natural God-given talent and it will always show itself. And if you don't know, ask God to show you. God, show me what my purpose is. Let it come to me what my purpose is. Reveal to me what my purpose is and he will show you. At some point, you gotta realize you have a direct connection to the source. Ask and it will be given, okay? Ask God and he will tell you. But don't beat your head around, don't beat your head around about it. Oh, I gotta know. Cause I, my biggest regret is in my 20s when I just was so, oh, I wanna know what my purpose is. I was 25 crying, we all know what my purpose is. And then you turn 30 and you realize all that stuff that you learned in your 20s was like bull crap. And you're not really that person and you really don't like this, you really don't like that. Life is about making choices and life is simply about life is about hold on y'all my necklace life is about making choices and life is trial and error and it may not look right to people some people all the time because uh it just may not look right to some people all the time but you gotta sometimes at some point you have to sit down and be honest with yourself and say is this the life that i want and is this the life that i want to be in is this what i want to be doing and if not, you always have the possibility and the cap you always have the capability. And if not, you always have the capability to change where you are. You always have the capability to change the traje trajectory of your life. You have that capability. You just have to believe that you can do it. And I believe in you, so go out there and do it, child. Cause we need you, the hell? If, when you're not fulfilling your purpose, you can't help other people that, that need your help. We're all put here to help one another. So if I'm not fulfilling my purpose, if I don't do certain things, I can't fulfill what my ultimate purpose is in the world. I'm here for a reason, baby. And I wanna do, I wanna work in that reason. I wanna have that passion and I want to touch others and help others. Mm -hmm. So I'm sending you lots of love and lots of light and lots of confidence, and lots of everything, okay? Because you can do this, girl, believe in yourself. And like I said, turn your ass on some affirmations on YouTube. Look up some videos about confidence. Instead of scrolling on that social media, scroll, 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 53 hours out the day, turn you on some confidence stuff on YouTube. Go through your healing and grieving day by day. It's so hard, sometimes it feels like torture. So day for day, this is the last question, y'all. Day by day for me, like I said, having systems in place that keep my mind in a good space. I go to work now, Monday through Friday from eight to five. Before I get up, I try to, I'm gonna really try this week cause I was kinda tired last week. I get up and I do my meditation. I meditate, I have a everything works out for me. Meditation that I do, I'll put it down below. It's like a five minute meditation, just five minutes. Sets me on a good foot for the day. And when I'm at work, my job is not mentally taxing. It's a contract job. It don't stress me out. I like going to work. I go to work, I have my headphones in and I'm listening to positive affirmations and positive things. And I'm working. And I do my one mile walk. I come home. I probably do some Instacart after I get off. And then I come home, I may do a workout video or something like that. And I'm having, just making sure I have a lot of gratitude for the day in my life. Also, with grief, it comes and it goes. You have your moments when you feel so great and so grand, and then you have your moments where you feel like, sad and down and upset and not happy. And I cry it out. And I say, I miss my mama. And I cry. And I just feel the, those emotions. Because I think it's important to feel them. 
I learned that a lot of things that we go through can get trapped in our body. So I think releasing and, and understanding, okay, Alexis, your mama is not here, but you can also gain, you can also gather up the strength from your mama. Because she's on the other side, but she can help you. Just having this, just, just remind myself that I do have the strength of my mama and my mom's child, and I can overcome anything. I'm not limited in what I have to do. I'm not limited in anything. I can uh, overcome anything. I am resilient. I am persevere. I can persevere. And although my mom is not here, I can do this. <laughs> Cause I got to a point where I feel like I could not do this. And I didn't think nobody understood. And I, and you get tired of saying, I'm sad cause my mama gone. And people don't get it, you know? Girl, you gonna get me to cry, but You have to have systems in place and you have to feel those emotions. You have to feel them. Don't bottle them up. Don't go into overdrive with trying to cover the emotions up. Don't go into overdrive with trying to cover with jumping into a relationship, trying to cover up how you really feeling about grieving and all that because it's going to come out. What don't come out in what they say, what don't come out in the rinse and come out in the washing. That's an old, like, country term, but it'll come up, and it might show up when you're 50. If you hold on, if you don't express those emotions and those feelings. When talking about my mama, I be about to cry. <laughs> and I let it right on out, because I, you know, I just feel those emotions, because it's the biggest heartbreak I've ever felt in my life. I wasn't even, I was sad when my daddy passed away, but I wasn't this heartbroken. It, it's a heartbreak and it may not ever heal, but like I said, you learn to live with it. Girl, please don't get me to cry, but you learn to live with it. And you learn that nothing is for certain and you have to live for now. You have to live for now. You have to love for now. Because nothing is for certain. And people will go. And that's just not. And them passing away. Like I said earlier. People may just have to leave your life. And you have to know how to deal with that. Okay. But if you grieving right now. And you going through grief as well. I'm sending you a lot of love. I'm sending you a lot of light. And just know you're not alone, but you just have to live through it. Don't let it tear you down, okay? Because it's a part of life. And we all will go through the point, if you are close to your parents, where well, your parents will leave here. You may leave before them, and they will have to grieve you. But just enjoy now, okay? Just enjoy now. Girl, my makeup was so cute, and you got me in here crying. I don't like that. Y'all, we got a few more questions, child. I'm drinking this one. I'm so thirsty, like. I don't know what that's about. But we got a few more questions. Um, I asked last minute, I forgot. I asked last minute, like, do y'all have any more questions? For saving. Journey. Journey ton. Girl, I don't know how to say that. So my biggest tip for saving. If you work a nine to five job, take a, have a percentage of that go into an online checking account or banking account, savings account. Not a banking account, a savings account. When I worked at State Farm, I would have 20% of my money go to an online savings account. I never saw this money. I could go in there and see how much it was. But if I wanted to transfer this money to my checking account, it would take three to four business days. Child, by then I like would have forgot if it was like at the store, like oh, I want these shoes but I only got the money in my savings. I'm not waiting three days. And at that point, you don't even want it anymore. So it would save me a lot of, it saved me a lot of money. And I wasn't, I was able to keep my savings in my savings. When I went home, when my dad passed away in 2015, I went home, 
And I stayed home for three months off of my savings alone because I was able to save my money. Now this, now even if you're not making a lot of money or you're an independent contractor or you work for yourself, always pay yourself first. Give yourself at least 10%, 15% and put it in a savings account online and just watch your money grow, child, cause it will grow. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest saving tip. I don't have any other options, like any other tips, but that's my main tip. Pay yourself first. And have a lot, a certain amount of money to go into an online account, uh, online account girl. You won't regret it. All right. S. Max said, how do you stay quiet not give advice when you know a friend is making a bad choice? Uh, I'm a very blunt person. And if you know me, you know I'm blunt. I say exactly what it is and how I feel about certain things. But sometimes you got to know when, I, when, no, when to not open your mouth. And I will share my opinion on things, but if I'm gauging the conversation and I feel like you're like, oh, you know, I don't feel like you would be open to what I'm saying, I just let you make the bad choice. Or, like I said, I would just say gauge the, gauge the conversation, gauge the room. A lot of y'all don't know how to gauge the room. Gauge the room and see, okay, when y'all talking, well, if I say this, she might feel away. Or she might, even if you feel away. Because sometimes I still tell you if you feel away. Because sometimes people need to hear the harsh truth. Like, that sounds stupid. Why would you be doing that? Or it's a way to, it's a way to say things. You know how they say you could catch more bees with honey? It's a way to say things. So you could word it in a way like, hey, girl, when you said that, it made me think. And I feel like you shouldn't be doing that because it can have major consequences. Sometimes you just got to let people know all right. But it's the way to say it. Just say it in a nice way. And if they're not receptive to it, then so they're not receptive to it, that's just their lesson that they have to learn. And just let it be. So yeah, that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Best advice for someone going through a loss. I already talked about this. Feel it. And know that they, the days do get better. And you will learn to live with it. You may not ever get over it, but you will learn to live with it. Did you ever retouch your microblading for your eyebrows? No, girl, I never got them retouched. Um, I don't know if I ever would do microblading again just because my brows, I don't know. I raise them myself. I fill them in if I want to fill them in. I think I'm going to start doing tinting on my eyebrows, though, because I want them to look like real crisp. But I'm going to do it myself because I'm not paying money to let somebody tint my eyebrows. I know how to do them. Okay, I was just thinking that yesterday, so that's so weird you asked about that. Because I was like, I want to start tinting my eyebrows because I want them to be full. Like, I want them to be real thick. And on the tails of my eyebrows, they're kind of thin. So, yeah, I want to figure that out. Okay, any hairstyles or makeup looks you swear by and which would you not do and why? I'm not a cut crease girl no more. I When I used to be into makeup, you remember back in the day, like three, four years ago, maybe five years ago, it was the cut crease, it was the heavy makeup look, it was all that. I'm just not that girl no more. I like natural, natural makeup. Uh, like I have on now, like you look enhanced, but not too enhanced. I like that. I don't like all that crazy stuff, them long, lashes like this you can't see so those are the things that i don't like and looks that you swear by i love just a basic look like oh okay she got a little makeup on like it looks like she really don't have makeup on do she have makeup on like it will she look good and i also think something that's really important is having a lash that fits your eye shape it's lashes that fit. My eyes are cat, like, not like cat shaped, but they are very small and, yeah, they tiny. The best eye look, that best lash that looks good on my eye shape is the cat eye, cat eye. So that's like when it's short, medium, and then long, because it elongates my eyes. I know that and I stick with it. Sometimes I may wear lashes that all are the same length, but I know what looks good on me. Knowing what looks good on you is so important, especially as you get older. You gotta know what what gets the girls jumping, okay? And, and you have to know what looks good on you. Like, okay, I know if I wear my hair like this, it's gonna look good on me. It always looks good on me. 
what's flattering to you. Everybody is different. Just because Sally Sue wear 25 millimeter lashes and go get her lashes done with them one each and every which way, don't mean that's gonna look flattering on you. And it make her look like a damn fool too in person. Okay, I ain't knocking nobody what they like. If you like that, then so be it. But I'm just saying, you have to know what looks good on you and what you feel confident in. Yeah, that's important. I hope this helps. I hope it helps you. I hope y'all like this q and A. I I didn't have a whole lot of questions, but I did have some, and I am grateful for everybody that did respond and that did ask me a question. I love each and every one of y'all that did. I love y'all so much. Uh, so, that's the end. That's the last question. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you have not hit the thumbs up, go ahead and hit it. If you have not shared me on your social media while you're watching this, I don't know why the hell you have it and you need to. And go ahead and hit subscribe so you can be subscribed to my channel. If it's anything that you want to see on my channel, put it down below. A lot of y'all said y'all want to see my updated makeup routine um, and some other stuff. But yeah. And I will talk to y'all later. And I love y'all so much. Bye.